Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Cheryl Lentz. Today's video begins a five-part series with regard to crafting and drafting your doctoral dissertation or your graduate capstone thesis project. The purpose of our chapter one is to look at the foundation of your study. There's really two levels that this exists on. The macro level, which is how all of your chapters for your study are going to work together. For many universities, this is a five-chapter series. For some, it is seven. The first chapter really has two functions. You have to be able to, at the macro level, introduce your overall purpose for your problem statement as it relates to all five chapters. And then at the micro level, to be able to still offer an introduction, a body, and a conclusion for each within individual chapters. And then chapter one, transition in chapter two, which will be our next segment. Chapter one's purpose really is to look at that problem statement. This is what drives the train and offers focus for your entire project. What are you doing this for? Why is it relevant? What are you going to contribute to the greater body of knowledge? What is that specific problem you're going to look at to solve? The whole idea here with problem statement is the ability to look at just solving a sliver of the problem. If I may offer some advice that my mentor offered me, don't try and solve world hunger. Save it for the book. Instead, go ahead and make a sandwich. The more specific and succinct that your problem statement can be, the easier that you will have with this project. Let me invite you to also look at the university templates that you may have to be for each subheading for each chapter that you're going to require. Let me invite you to religiously follow that template. It will make your life so much easier to be able to strictly follow the template headings that your particular university suggests. Again, the problem statement is going to be uh, followed by all of your particular universities, so we want to make sure that you spend a great deal of time crafting this. Find that anchor statistic. That anchor statistic is really going to in follow your entire project. So we want to be able to look at that very specific. If there's a high turnover rate, mention that 10% turnover rate in terms of dollars and cents or 90% turnover rate or absenteeism or decision making process, whatever that may be, you can find that anchor statistic that will help guide the specificity and always keep you focused going forward. Let me invite you, once that problem statement is crafted, that you print it and put it in many places as you can, and every time you're writing your project, you're going to look at that, because that will be the basis that drives all of your writing going forward. It'll help you keep you in a very specific box and parameters for looking at only how what you're writing contributes to the problem statement. Next, we want to look at your purpose statement. Why are you doing this? Why is this relevant? Who's going to benefit from it? So you want to look at all of the various um, attributes and stakeholders in this project. Because if you look at the idea of answering two questions, no matter what writing you do, who's your audience and what's your message? So this is where the purpose statement is going to be able to be very important for you to be able to say the significance to the overall organizational field or the significance to the nature of leadership. These are the types of things that you want to start looking at that your problem is going to potentially contribute to once you complete your study. Lastly, we want to look at the theoretical framework. The whole purpose of dissertation and capstone thesis is to be able to culminate in a final product, project for you to extract all the information that you've learned so far in your educational curriculum to be able to have a final project from which you to extract and apply this information. So you'll be looking at this theoretical framework on the specific types of studies you're going to be doing, whether it's organizational behavior theories, leadership theories, management theories, health-related theories. These are the things that you are going to be able to help justify once you get into Chapter 2 with the relevance and where you're going to be taking your problem statement. So you make sure that you choose your problem statement and your theoretical framework very, very carefully. Lastly, you're going to have some discussion on who your population sample is and who your audience is going to be. You'll finish with a summary, and then you'll be able to make sure that you're going to move into your next chapter with a transition. Remember, we have two levels, that macro level for chapter one to be able to interview, introduce your entire project for all five or seven chapters, as it may be, and then the micro level that each chapter has an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Remember those writing fundamentals. You want to introduce and tell your reader what to expect in terms of topic, and writing objectives, and then you want to be able to summarize those in your conclusion to prove that you've met the objectives you started with. So I want to invite you to be able to join me for our next segment, which we will focus on Chapter 2 for Research Methodology. But for now, please join me for additional tips and tricks at our website, www.refractivethinker.com.
backslash WordPress for additional information. I wish you the best of luck as you continue on this adventure, and I'll see you the next time when we focus on Chapter 2. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Dr. Cheryl Lentz. Goodbye.